Upstart is the company which I think has the potential to reach $1 trillion in market cap within a decade or so. If you like the company, this is the channel for you. That's why I have talked about this company many times over the past few months. Their business model, the financials, how this company create a surplus economy, disrupted a large industry with AI, why this company has the chance to reach $1 trillion market cap, why their loans have much lower net loss ratio than other platforms, the financial report, the business model, the products, the market, and the risks. After all that, there's still one question remains. Even if the company has no competition now, how long can this company maintain their leadership? This is the question we will discuss today. I listened to all the interviews and the conference calls from Upstart Management. The best explanation of the AI is from the company CFO Sanjay. As I said before, Sanjay is the smartest person I know in Google. Usually when he speaks, everybody listens. Not because of his position, but because he usually has some unique insights. Also a special ability to explain very complex issues in simple terms. This interview is no different. In his view, the AI from Upstart has three parts. The first part is like the columns on the spreadsheet. The 1600 variables the company collected about borrowers over the last eight years. The second is the roles, which is the repayment history. The third and the most important one is the complex model the company built over the years. The earlier AI was pretty simple. It assumes all the variables in the model were independent from each other. But the reality is, many of the variables the model used to measure somebody's risk impact each other and do not exist independently of others. For example, we must consider someone's location when we look at his or her income because the cost of living is very different from place to place. Trying to use these variables to measure somebody's risk of default requires finding those subtle relationships between the 1600 variables and train the model with huge repayment data to make the prediction of future more accurate over time. The variables, the repayment history, the AI model, all three must work in concert. Big banks certainly have a lot of consumer repayment history. They didn't ask consumer for those variables when they approve their loans. They do not have the columns. The data, therefore, is not very useful to build the AI model. If competitors want to learn from Upstart, if they want to build the same model, they must have to collect all the same variables, actually approve loans, and train their model with the real data, repayment or default. They must take the time to do all that, just like Upstart, and there is no shortcut. That's why Sanji believes they have been doing this for eight years, and even if their companies who can find hundreds of thousands of best engineers trying to solve this problem quickly, it will take them the same amount of time to go through the same process. That's the head start of Upstart. If in seven or eight years, another company has gone through the process, reaching 80% accuracy compared to Upstart, will that be a big problem? I don't think so, because Upstart will not stop innovating either. Their AI model will get more and more advanced as more loans are issued, as more data, more variables are added. Within a few years, the company will also have a lot of partnerships with thousands of banks and institutions to provide them with loans and capture a large market share. Even if there's something new, a similar provider in the market, as long as Upstart continue to lead in their model, using their first mover advantage and massive amount of data, the banks and institutions will not abandon the best option just to do business with the second best. It's a bit like Google search versus the competition. Google can keep itself ahead of the game because it has the biggest market share, more data than everyone else. Even if there's a good replacement in the market, 
is that not become a threat to Google. I believe similar result will happen with Upstart as long as they continue to be innovative. Sanjay also spoke about a couple other important issues in the interview. The first one is about the financial forecast. It's very difficult to be accurate in their forecast because to a certain extent, they are trying to forecast innovation. Management is relatively conservative in providing future revenue expectations. As we talked about before, any huge advance in AI models can cause the revenue to significantly exceed expectations. Interestingly, in some quarter, AI may not be able to advance as much as expected, and they may actually fall short of expectations, which might provide a good time to buy the stock. Secondly, he talked about the percentage of automation on loan approval. If they can further improve that, the company can continue improving the margin. But the current rate is 71%. How high can this go? Sanjay explained. There will always be people who take loans with no intention to pay back, but those are pretty small, like in single digit. These applications require human action to take them up. The rest, over time, does not. If the model continues to improve, the company can automatically approve up to 80%, maybe 90%. That would be great for the margin. The last one is about bank removing FICO score requirements. Before that, even though banks have some confidence in upstart model, they still require a minimal FICO score as safety. This practice reduces the number of loans that could have been issued. For example, upstart give the bank 10,000 loan applications. The AI model believes those people are all above bank's risk requirements. But their FICO score may be very different from 650 to 720, for example. If the bank had to add something like FICO must be above 680, then those borrowers with FICO score below that will not be able to get a loan. This is very unnecessary. They have low FICO scores, but their risks are not higher than others. Now, finally, one bank fully trusted upstart model and removed this thing. If more banks follow this and remove FICO score, Upstart revenue from banks will increase even faster. Upstart is now 10% of my position. In the coming weeks, I want to increase that to 30%. As I research more about this company, my confidence is growing. Sometimes I ask myself the question, why I can't make this a 50% position like I did when I bought Facebook two years ago? I don't have a good answer. In the next few weeks, I will suspend all other projects and focus only on Upstart, which very likely will be the best investment opportunity in the next few years. I have compared Upstart with early Google many times. Although it may be a little bit crazy to talk about Upstart reaching a trillion dollar market cap now, but in fact, for them, total addressable market, the global ads market, which including China, is only 600 billions, while the loan market exceeds this number 10 times. In terms of product, Google Search and Upstart AI are both revolutionary products, much better than the competition. In terms of quality of management, Upstart founders and the management team are certainly better quality than Google's early management team. So, as long as Upstart continues to execute, the crazy projection I had for Upstart could prove to be very conservative. Okay, if you like the video, please share this with your friends. This video is not investment advice. Thank you. Goodbye.